He says, when your tenants call you up at renewal time and say, oh, hey, Mr. Landlord, uh, it's uh, so-and-so tenant, Dr. Dr. Smith, and I've got two years or a year left on my lease, and uh, you know, let's talk about the renewal. He said, do you know what you do when, when you get that call? What do you do? Ignore it. My goal is to run out the shot clock and get you as close to here as I possibly can or less. I've just figured out a way of making money. Because I know that for every month that goes by, after the 10 month mark, for every month that goes by, I just probably found another three or 4% increase in rent per month, depending on the kind of landlord I am, and most of them are pretty smart. So Dr. Joe Black, is 64 years old, two years left in his lease, 10 year term, two years left, eight years into it, two five year options to renew. Decides to sell his practice, represents to the buyer in a conversation, the associate, that there is two years left plus two five year options to renew, plenty of runway. Associate decides to send that lease to us have a look at what's in the lease before he or she assumes it. We take a look at it and say, were you under the impression that you had options? And the associate says, well, of course, there is a clause that says options to extend, option to renew. We say, unfortunately, we're, the, we're gonna be the bearers of not such great news. You don't actually have options to extend. Doctor says, well, what do you mean? We say, well, it's very simple. The landlord granted two five-year options to extend to Dr. Joe Black and started off those options to extend by saying that provided that Dr. Joe Black shall remain as the tenant. As soon as the lease gets assigned, as soon as Dr. Black is no longer the tenant and somebody else is, which is what happens through a transition, guess what happens to those options? Gone. you get a letter from the landlord three years into your 10-year lease saying, hey, listen, Mr. Tenant, Dr. Tenant, Tenant, we've decided we want to pick you up and move you four units away. It doesn't really matter where the landlord moves you to. It just matters that you've given the landlord the right to move you. And if that happened at some point in your career by surprise, that's a big whack. Because costs, whether we like it or not, are recoverable over time. Downtime may not be. When your patients get up in the morning and get in their car and drive to your office, they likely drive by 35 other dentists. There's a lot of choice. And if you're dark for that period of time, it's a problem. Summary of tonight is that the details of your lease can cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars if left alone. I hope I've been successful in convincing you that it's not just about the rents. It's about minimizing risk, maximizing flexibility and practice value, and achieving long-term peace of mind.